Christmas Day 2014, the Bulls played the Lakers at the United Center, led by Derrick Rose and Jimmy Butler, Joe Kim Noah, newly acquired free agent Pau Gasol, and they were playing a struggling Lakers team that was without Kobe Bryant due to injury. The Bulls were on a roll in that stretch and would go on to win 50 games that season, finishing third in the Eastern Conference. Why is that relevant, you might ask, in this win over the Warriors? Well, that was the last time, the last game that I attended in person that the Bulls won. And I've been to a lot of Bulls games since then both in Chicago and in the Bay Area, but that was the last time I saw the Bulls won while in attendance at a game. Until last night, when the Bulls pulled off the improbable win against the Golden State Warriors, a team that have been playing much better basketball as of late. They blew out the Bucks the night before. Before that embarrassing loss to the Celtics, they had won 12 of their last 15, and the Bulls themselves were coming off a second night of a back-to-back, -back, traveling from Salt Lake in a game in which they nearly blew to the shorthanded Utah Jazz. So going into this game, I did not expect the Bulls to win. And it even looked like things were going to get out of hand with the way Klay Thompson was lighting the Bulls up, as he often does from behind the arc. The Bulls, for some reason, were leaving him wide open, but no, the Bulls fought back and kept it close throughout the second quarter, even took the lead at halftime. Had an incredible third quarter where they couldn't miss from three and took a 10-point lead, and then the fourth quarter, the Bulls couldn't ice it and put these guys away so I could watch the game comfortably. Nah, they had to make it competitive, right? They had to make it another clutch game to add to their pile, leading the league in clutch games. They had to let the Warriors come roaring back and take the lead. That is until the king of the fourth quarter, king in the fourth quarter, whichever term you like to use if you're going the Kenny Beecham route or the Game of Thrones route. DeMar DeRozan, yet again, willed this team to a win. Another impressive feat where we have now seen him do this three games in a row in the fourth quarter, coming up huge in the clutch for the Bulls and the Bulls leaving the game with their third straight victory. Now, as some of you know, if you follow me on Twitter, I decided to take the risky chance of taking my five-year-old daughter to this game, her first basketball game ever. Had no idea what to expect, whether she would get bored in the first quarter and keep asking to leave, whether she would complain that she was hungry, need to go to the bathroom, all that. And while it was oftentimes a bit distracting, I wasn't able to witness every possession in this game, she actually was a trooper and thoroughly enjoyed this game, making this win all the more fun to have her experience it as well. Sorry if that was too personal for the channel, I usually try to just keep a Bulls talk here, but wanted to share that it was a really cool moment for me as a father and as a Bulls fan to be able to share that with my daughter. But anyway, about this game. Now, being at the game in person, it's a little bit different in the sense that I don't follow along the box score throughout the game. I'm not following along what people are saying on Twitter. I'm truly just trying to enjoy the experience and in the moment. So it's always kind of a surprise to me to see how some of the numbers break down after the game. It was a bit surprising to me to see just how poorly the Warriors shot the ball because it felt like they were hitting a lot of their threes. They actually went 11 for 42 from behind the arc. I knew Curry was struggling. He even airballed a three, which I let the fans hear about it, shouting airball at the top of my lungs and received some death stares as a result of it. Curry obviously left the game late in the fourth quarter with that ankle injury, which certainly helped the Bulls in securing that win, but obviously we hope that he's okay. Draymond Green also got fouled out, which I honestly cannot stand that dude. It's shocking to me that the refs let him get away with murder with the way he shouts at them. I was right in front of the last play after his last foul where he was absolutely berating the refs and they did nothing. Whereas most guys would get a T in those instances, the way that he was getting up in their grill. He actually had a good game too in securing a triple-double before being fouled out towards the end of the game. But for the Bulls, shooting 44% from three, they hit more threes than the Warriors did, hitting 16 to the Warriors 11. Vucevic really went three for six from deep, which by the way, he had a big game, a big three at the end of the game to tie it and ice it with those two free throws to put them up four after Pajemski smoked that open layup to tie the game with six seconds left. Vucevic was great in this one. I mean, taking full advantage of the Warriors small ball lineup, working in the post, and they simply did not have an answer to guard him in the paint. And it made it all the more easier when he was able to sink his threes as well. I'm not really sure why Kevon Looney has found himself out of the rotation for the Warriors, especially in a game like this where the Bulls were just letting Vucevic eat. I must be missing something there on why he's not playing, a guy who was their starting center last season. But Vucevic in this game, 33 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, 14 for 23 from the floor, a good all-around game from Vuce, although his defense was pretty questionable, as it usually is, and he caught a break by just giving away what would have been the game-tying basket to the rookie. Thankfully, he missed it. DeMar DeRozan, like I said, just phenomenal in this game. What I appreciated from DeMar in this one, and it's nice when you can see it up close and personal, but the Bulls were getting out of sorts and letting the Warriors go on that run in the fourth quarter where they took the lead. DeMar came back down and got an and one, stopped the bleeding, and was yelling at the guys, yelling in a good way. Like, guys, calm down, settle down, keep your heads in the game. Don't worry about them going on this run. Keep doing what we've been doing, play smart basketball. And it really changed the Bulls' tone for the rest of the game going forward. 
where they were much more locked in defensively and making the right plays in the final possessions. Damar, of course, doing what he does best, gets the three the old-fashioned way so many times in this game, so many and ones, propelled him to 33 points, going 10 for 17 from the floor. Crazy that he himself also shot three for six from deep, 10 for 11 from the line, eight rebounds and four assists. The Bulls don't win this game without DeMar DeRozan because they would have gotten out of sorts if they had not. Kobe White, solid game for him, even though he was a little on the colder side on the shooting front, seven for 16, two for six from three. Uh, they were guarding him pretty heavily after the kind of night he had against the Jazz, but Kobe was contributing in other ways with seven assists, four rebounds, three steals. He finished the game with 20 points. Also another solid game for Aodesumu as well, 38 minutes, 14 points, six assists, six for 12 from the four. Batim, or is it now Bitim? They're saying that's actually how it's pronounced. Uh, he had some solid minutes off the bench, hitting a couple threes, was scrappy on defense. I love this guy's energy. You know, the more and more I see him play, and it's surprising that for a rookie, he knows how to make the right plays and read the defense well. Just has very good instincts. And then Javon Carter had a good game. Javon Carter stepped up and played 21 minutes last night, scoring 10 points on four for seven, hit a couple threes as well, and actually played solid defense. Yeah, it also helps when he's matched up against someone that's closer to his size, like Chris Paul. But still, for a guy we've kind of been ragging on all season, stepped up in a big way for the Bulls in this game off the bench. But yeah, great win. Who would have thought the Bulls would be 3-0 on this four-game road trip going up against some tough teams? And now they have a chance to get back to 500 if they can get a win in LA tomorrow against a very hot Clippers team. The Bulls haven't been 500 since they went 1-1 one one to start the season, and they haven't been above 500 since the start of last season. Crazy. This year has just been full of all types of ups and downs for the Bulls. Don't look now either, but with the Pacers going through a bit of a rut, the Bulls are now only three and a half games back behind them for the eighth seed in the East. Could they somehow squeak into that spot? We'll see. Still a lot of tough games ahead of them though. Let me know what you guys thought of the game in the comments. Hope you all enjoy your weekend. As always, be sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.